Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the video, and today we're going to be checking out the new Toolkit RC M6 charger. Now this is sort of the little brother, little cousin to the M8 charger, which is a 300 watt charger. Um, and now we're taking a look at this guy, which is a 150 watt, 10 amp, 1 to 6 cell charger. So just real quick, what you get in the tiny little box is just a little instruction manual and a USB to USB cable. So that's pretty interesting. I don't have too many of those. I can find some use for that later. So real quick, looking at the charger, for the input side, we have a 2 to 6S LiPo, 7 to 28 volts with an XT60. Does not have backhoe technology. That is ISDT. So this is just a plain XT60. Here we have a 5 volt, 2.1 amp USB output. And here we have sort of a silver connector to use the PWM and SBUS functions that are built in, which I'll talk about later. Moving to the other side, pretty standard. We have an XT60 output and a 2 to 6S balance board. Just looking all around, there's fan slots all around with areas for air to come in, and here is the fan itself. And then we do have these two little pop-up legs that are little pieces of plastic. They just fold out there and give it a little bit of angle to sit on your table so it doesn't sit completely flat. Kind of nice, a little bit gimmicky. Uh, these can pop out, you can see very easily. However, this is a pre-production version, and they have said that they're improving the quality of the mold in the plastic for the ones that are actual production. So let's just go ahead. I have a 6S LiPo um, charged up. Let's get this guy plugged in. So real quick, you can see we are greeted with the menu. And now this is not touchscreen over here. It sort of has capacitive touch on these buttons. Back, up and down, and enter. So as I mentioned earlier, it does have this servo lead over here. And that's kind of interesting if we go to... Um, output now this can you can tap up or down on this but i found it almost works better if you like scroll um, it's been a lot more reliable for me that way so if i press down here you can see we can do power pwm ppm and s bus um, you can measure the signals coming out from that i don't really know what purpose that has i myself am absolutely never going to use that but if you want you would be able to see the microseconds outputted here um, but i'm pretty much just going to go over that we can go into the measurer and the measure has sort of the same thing, except we have bat. So if I go ahead and um, plug in another 6S, this is a R-Line V3. I'm just go in, whoops, Let's just go into there. We can see all the voltage is brought up very nice. Gives us a difference in the cells, the delta here. You can see this is a very, very well balanced pack. This is the internal temperature of the charger, a percentage of what it should be based on overall voltage and all these cells here. And now we are in mode voltage. So if I change, whoops, if I go on to that and then change it, we can go into internal resistance. And if you give it a little bit, if we come down here to test, you can see it just tests these cells here. And it seems to read a little bit higher than the ISDT chargers. Um, so I wouldn't take these numbers as anything of gospel, but it is nice that it does have this function. So you can just go ahead and test batteries to batteries comparing with this charger. So now that we're back, we can get into the settings. So here you can see, um, you can set your min input voltage or input power. I set it to 200 watts, um, hoping that I'd be able to get to 200 watts, but it still limits you to 150. Your temperature, so if it gets above that, 70C, um, I increase this a little bit, it will shut off the charger. Just a couple of other things here. A couple other settings, I turned the buzzer as far down as I could. And that's about it few basic settings. So now we get into the charger. You can basically store three different profiles. You can see up here I have lipo auto and then there's another lipo auto and the new. So you could store like lead acid, HV. Um, you can store three different um, profiles of batteries that you want. So you just kind of scroll between them. You can see here you add a new battery. Um, so once you select that, you can go into the settings for the battery. So you can choose anywhere from lipo to HV to lifey to lithium ion, to nickel metal hydride, to lead, and that's it. Pretty standard for these type of chargers. So then you go down to voltage. This is another nice thing. It lets you adjust um, anywhere 0.05 up or down for all of these cell types. So if you're doing HV, you can charge up to 4.4 volts with this. I normally charge to 4.22. Cells you can change from auto to one to six, whatever you want there. And then you can change the charge current and just charge current. And down here you have charge, discharge, and storage. Discharge, you set what voltage you want it to go to. Storage, it goes to 3.8 volts. So let's just go ahead and start a charge cycle. And you notice I do have it, um, you can see it's just verifying what you want to charge to. So there it's going. 
And now this is a 150 watt charger and I do have it set to 10 amps right now, but because I'm charging a six cell LiPo, if you divide that by 25.2 volts, you're only gonna be able to get about five amps out of this thing. So you can see down here, I'm actually pulling 151.2. It's actually going very well, probably because um, this battery is fully charged, so it has a really good input power. I'm actually getting 6.3 amps out of that. That is over what it's rated for, so that is really nice. And over here, you can see the different cells. If they are blue instead of gray, that means they are slightly out of balance, but very, very negligible. And then if you scroll, you can get your internal resistances in real time. You can see it'll go ahead and update that. And then down here we have our total watt hours and hopefully you can hear that the fan is actually turning on. It's actually a pretty quiet fan. The only problem I've had with the fan um, relates to the case. If you can hear this, oh, we can probably see it too. The case is very flimsy. There's no support across here. So any pressure, any pressure on the back of the case will actually um, hit the fan and stop it, which can eventually burn out the motor. But once again, as I mentioned, this is a pre-production case, so the quality will be getting a little bit better, but I still think that'll be a problem. But if you set it on the table, it's, it's not an issue at all. It's just if you press on it, well, not even pressing here, you have to press just holding it in your hand, it could be an issue. So you can see we're bouncing from anywhere to four to six amps, but for a charger this size, it is actually very nice. And if you go down to, say you're charging a three or four S, you're gonna be getting a lot higher current. It's a simple math equation of watts, your voltage times amps equals your watts, so you take 150 watts that you have if you're charging a 6S battery, divide that by 25 volts, there you go, that's how many amps you're going to be able to put into it. And if you're using a 4S battery, divide 150 by 16.8, and there you go. As you can see, as the battery is charging a little bit, and it's getting a little bit of warm since I'm putting 6 amps, six amps to it, as well as the charger is just kind of settling in, the internal resistances are coming down a little bit, which is perfectly normal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop that charge. And if we go back, let's go down to discharge. So this is where it tells you how much per cell you want and your input limit. So this is really cool. So we can change this. Let's see, what's the lowest we can go? So the lowest we can go is actually 3.00 volts per cell. Not sure why you would wanna do that. That is a, uh, a little radical. I guess if you're um, discharging the battery to be disposed of, um, that's a good way to get it down pretty low um, quickly, and then you can connect it to some other means of dis, uh, discharging it. But I'm just going to go to 3.75. Sure, this is discharge. Um, so there we go. Let's see how fast it can actually discharge. I know my other big chargers can only do about 1.1 amps, but we still are able to get the 2 amps out of it. So that is basically just converting it back into heat. Pretty impressive that we're able to see that it's getting up to the two amps. It's not nothing crazy, but it's definitely very nice to have. And if you can see up here, we are slowly rising in our temperature up to 45 degrees Celsius, probably 46 just any second now. Yeah, so there we go. So let's just stop the um, cycle. So we can go back. I'm not a fan of the menus though, I have to admit. Um, I'll go over that in a second, but I'm, I like the ISDT menus a little bit better. So. Let's just go ahead and unplug this battery here and shut the charger off. And one of the cool things about it is actually you can power it from the output side. So this is going to be a quick way if you need to just check your cells. The only bad thing is it will not power directly off of the balance cable, which is a little disappointing. You do need the XT60, but you can see we can go ahead and get in here. And if we want to balance the cells, it'll balance in here. And it will take a little while, but it can do the balancing there. And while we're in this mode of output only, this is the only screen you can access. You can't do any of the other functions, but it is nice to have. So probably the most important comparison is with the ISDT series of chargers. So this is my current favorite charger. This is the ISDT Q6 Plus. And now this is a 300 watt charger. And you can see it is just a little bit bigger. The toolkit is sort of a rectangle. This is definitely a little bit larger. Um, but I really, really like this ISDT charger. The interface is just really easy to use, really simple. And a big thing, a thing I'm a real big fan of is the scroll wheel. It is much, much easier and more tactile for me to just go through here and set everything I want. If I want to do a 4S LiPo, 3S LiPo, it does skip around a little bit, but I just found with this toolkit, using these buttons, like the line separating between going back and hitting up is just really not it doesn't always work, which is why I recommended swiping a little bit. That definitely can help. But just going through the menus and using this capacitive touch is just, I don't think it's nearly as nice as using 
um, the ISDT part here. Now, of course, this is 300 watts. This is 150. ISDT does have a 150 watt version, um, pretty similar size to this, although this is the smallest one. This definitely does have some merit though, especially since it's only $25. It is one of the cheapest little chargers out there and it is definitely very, very feature packed. Um, will I use all the features? Like I'm definitely not gonna use a signal output. I'm not gonna be checking my lipos with it. It's just too slow and you have to plug <laughs> both the leads in there. But overall, it is a nice handy little pocket charger or for something in the field and you can charge at 150 watts and you can get all the way up to the wattage because I know sometimes with these chargers, you can get stuck. Like it'll say 200 watts, but you can really only do like 150. So it is nice that you can get all 150 out of this really consistently. Yeah, that's going to do it for this quick little video on the Toolkit RC M6 charger. There'll be links in the description below. It's a little bit hard to find at this point. It's kind of in the wholesale stage, but I think I found it on Banggood. So I'll link that if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.